It is Locked on Jazz for the, I don't know where my date is on this thing anymore, the 1st of November. Obviously, Donovan's calendar had already changed yesterday before it all started. We'll break down the Jazz weekend performances, Donovan's strong close, the shooting woes that are taking place for the Jazz and overall in the league, and Quinn Snyder with some very interesting comments about physicality. It's all coming up on today's edition of Locked on Jazz. Pow. You are Locked On Jazz, your daily podcast on the Utah Jazz. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is. I'm David Locke, radio voice of the Utah Jazz, Jazz NBA insider. This is Locked on Jazz, your daily podcast on the Utah Jazz, giving you insight, expertise, geeky numbers, and hopefully making it way better to be a Jazz fan each and every day. Thanks so very much for making Locked on Jazz your first listen of the day. Glad to have you with us. And we are free and available on all platforms, including the live YouTube show every day and then available for you. Special hello to Cam and Jeremy and Bryce and Tyler and Jeremy and Spencer and JC and Neil, who've all said hi early this morning. Hope everyone's doing great. We got a bunch of stuff to get into. We'll start with the weekend games. Donovan's great close. Uh, Then we'll look at kind of what's going on with the Jazz shooting. Fear not. Nothing to worry about. I'll explain why. Uh, I have a theory on why veteran players like Dame Lillard are struggling. And then uh, Quinn Snyder has some interesting comments about physicality. Um, Veterans of Locked on Jazz, who also have learned that I have no memory. Last year, Monday, we did, I thought, our third segment. We closed every show on kind of in an interesting way, I thought, last year. And I just can't remember them all. Monday's was uh, trends. Tuesday was power rankings. Friday was points gained. What were Wednesday and Thursday? Does anybody remember? Because I couldn't come up with it this morning. So I don't know that we'll get to trends today because I want to do the thing with Quinn. Um, all right, let's start with the Bulls. Um, they're good. They've added three All-Stars and Lonzo Ball. They're just really good. And we couldn't take advantage of the, our depth over their depth, which is really what our advantage in that game was. Um and we could never get our offense rolling, and it was crazy physical. Uh, we were sitting courtside in that game, and with with a great seat and a, and a much better, you know, you could really feel the game. And when I asked uh, uh, Vince Lagarza after the game the next day, was that more physical than usual? And he said yes. And then I asked Quinn the same thing, and they said yes. So you know that I think. Um, was was a very, very physical game, and we couldn't get going. The, the times of the game where we usually dominate, which is really Mike Conley, first quarter to second quarter, is where we lost this game. So we were plus minus 15 in the Jared Butler, Eric Paschal, Jordan Clarkson, Joe Ingles, Rudy Gobert stretch in the first half, and then we were minus six in the second half in the Jared Butler, Trent Forrest, Eric Paschal, Jordan Clarkson, Rudy Gobert, Joe Ingles minutes. That's where when we usually dominate a game. It's usually Mike Conley, and then from there, and we just we didn't. We we ran, kind of tried the same model that we've been running there with Rudy and with the youngsters at point guard, and you know, in the minutes in which Jared Butler or Trent Forrest were on the floor, we were minus twenty one, and so. You know, it's really hard. Those guys are are trying to take a new step and they're going up against bona fide. In those cases, Lonzo Ball was on the floor for one of those stretches. DeMar DeRozan, Alex Caruso were on the floor for the second one as they kind of changed up the way they ran Lonzo Ball in the second half in that game. Um, DeMar DeRozan was on the floor in both those and dominated those stretches. Uh, so we really struggled in in that those periods of the game. Uh, and that's what the difference was. So not having Mike having the inexperience and in in trying to play a 10-man rotation and trying to give our, our young guards that opportunity. Uh, you know, Eric did not have as good a game on that night as he, he did last night or in some of our other games. So but the Bulls are good. Like, that was a that's a good basketball team with a lot of different offensive options. I thought the telling one was Vucevic, who just could get nothing done against Rudy all game long and looked like he'd been spooked by him and tr- 
track record numbers show he's been spooked by him. He's about two of 13, two of 14. And it was either DeRozan or Levine drives and leaves it behind um, for Vukcevic, who hits, you know, two big shots late, you know, in a case where he hadn't hit anything all day, but that's just having a guy who scored 20 points a game is willing to do it. DeRozan's a really good basketball player. Uh, sitting up close, was able to see the amount of times that DeRozan moves the floor to create other opportunities for his teammates. Uh, it really was impressive. You know, I think he's really misbranded as kind of this mid-range gunner. And he is take, he does take a lot of mid-range shots, but his game has evolved into a facilitator. He and Lonzo Ball clearly have kind of already figured out how to connect a little bit. There were two or different, three different times he threw nice, beautiful passes that went to open areas that Lonzo filled into. So I was, I, we were not very good. Um, no question on that. I was super impressed by them and how well they played and what they did defensively. The other one I was really impressed with in that game was our defense. Um, you know, our defense kept us in that game. If you run through as we, as I like to in our quarter by quarters, you know, first of all, overall for the night, we had a, we had a pretty good defensive night overall. Uh, on a night where our offense just didn't go, our defensive rating was a 102.9. I mean, you know, we're not going to lose a lot of games with a 102.9 defense. Um, in the first quarter, we were a 92.6 defensively. It's just terrific. Had a- absolutely came out, matched them. Our offense was was worse. In the second quarter, our defensive rating uh, against the Bulls was a 116.1, which was not great, but we matched offensively with a 137, and, and it kind of had the lead at that point. And then in the third quarter, we got it back down to a 96.2 while our offense was just horrendous. We had a 57 offensive rating in that third quarter and the defensive rating below a point of possession. Then the fourth quarter, it was a 107. So the defense kept us in that game, which to me is a great sign. that we're, We've made a conscious effort to try to still be that elite defensive team. Rudy's impact is there. Whiteside is having a massive impact at the rim. And we just offensively could not get uh, anything going. So then we go to Milwaukee and we got a gift and we took advantage of it. Like the schedule will do this. We'll get a loss somewhere along the way. We look at the road to 55. It'll all equal out, but we got a gift. We played them without arguably four of their starters, without Chris Middleton, without Brooke Lopez, without Drew Holiday, without Dante DiVincenzo. So that's, you know, that was a gift. And we did exactly what you're supposed to do. The game was never close. Um, it got down to five. We immediately took it to 10 or 12, I think. Um, having Mike back was everything. And But they're the world champs and they play hard. So when when you're in that setting, no one's taking that night off if you're the Milwaukee Bucks. You, you don't win by 30 in the NBA unless somebody rolls. And nobody with Giannis as a teammate is going to roll. But if you kind of walk through the game and just look at it from the second half on. I heard a bunch of people going to say, are you surprised it was that close? Like, so we start the second half. We're up nine to start the second half. We don't, we stay at nine and and then for a moment it gets to six, but we answer and we're back at eight, nine, 10, the whole half. We go to the end of the, the get to the quarter. We're up 12. We go up 15. And by the end of three, it's 15. The Bucs open on a run that gets it to nine. It hovers at nine. We keep kind of coming back and forth. Then they get it to five with 634 left. And I did have a moment on the broadcast of like, oh, shoot, don't do not do something silly and make this a one or two possession game where a bad bounce suddenly gives you a loss. Like, that's what you really have to make sure when you're playing a team that doesn't have the firepower, you – You've got to make sure you just don't put the game into a position where some, something funky happens and it goes the other way. Um, so they get it to six at 90, 84, and we promptly just answer with a, with a five, uh, seven, oh, run. And then we're up 13 and with two minutes up, we're at 12. It really was not a close game and they didn't have the firepower to make it close. And Royce was just outstanding defending Giannis last night Uh, to keep Giannis to nine two point field goals in the game to hold him to two free throws. That's outstanding work. And Royce really was, was as good as I've seen him in that regard. He was, he was just terrific. Uh, 
moved his feet, bodied up, physical, did everything you have to do with Giannis. Rudy shadowed. They had a nice game plan. They took advantage. In fact, there were no other guys on the floor that were of that same caliber. Chris Middleton, obviously, being out right before the game was a big deal. And took advantage. So we got a gift. So we go 2-1 and one on the trip. Uh, the defense was really, really good again. I think if you look at where we rank defensively, we're going to be near the top of the league. And we're just not shooting it very well. So let's dig into that and why what's going on with our shooting. Is there anything to be concerned about? Are there changes that should worry about our uh, shooting-wise? And we'll, we'll look at that uh, and continue and break that down. Today's show is brought to you by Murdoch Chevy. Located in Woods Cross and up in Logan, the Murdochs have been with Utah for over 80 years, and they are showing that commitment with all of the car shortages that are going on right now. The Murdochs have made a decision that under no circumstance will they charge you over MSRP. They are not going to gouge you, take advantage. And quite frankly, Blake said, it, I just don't want to be go, walking around town, going to church at the grocery store and have somebody there. It's like, oh, I bought a car from you and you charged me an extra, you know, are you glad you got the extra five grand? They're just not going to do it. It's not who they are. It's not who they believe in. Not what they're, how they're going to treat you. So Murdoch Chevy uh, in Woods Cross and in Logan have the same uh, program as Murdoch Hyundai going. In that regard, stop by, obviously, the Chevy. If you're looking for the, there's some reasons this time of year you might be interested in a truck or a big SUV, tax purposes. The 2021 Silverado's $1,500 off right now, uh, cash allowance. Uh, the Colorado truck is available as well. The great SUV lineup of the Traverse, the Equinox, and then the legendary Suburban and the Tahoe, all available at Murdoch. Chevy. Today's show also brought to you by Bilt Bar. What do they have up their sleeve this week? They have the mystery flavor. Guess the flavor you can win a prize, plus the paranormal pumpkin still available, the puffs, plus the coconut marshmallow puffs, blueberry muffin, cherry and lime, and strawberry puffs to go along with all the regular great flavors like peanut brownie, peanut butter brownie, coconut mint, mint brownie, coconut almond, salted caramel, raspberry double chocolate, cookies and cream, and cherry bar sia. Promo codes LOCKED15 gets you 15% off at Built Bar. You can try the broth and the bites and the boost and all the other fun things they have as well at Built.com. But the key here is the incredible 130 calories, 2.5 fat grams, 4 net carbs, 4 sugars, and 17 grams of protein. Is it a candy bar? Is it a protein bar? It tastes great. And regardless, it's healthy. 100% real chocolate and 100% real, maybe really delicious. But it doesn't sound as good. Yeah, we're going to just sacrifice English for the well-being of the slogan. Uh, it's actually, they don't do it. It's 100% real chocolate, 100% delicious. They have correct English. Uh, all right, let's get into our shooting woes. Thanks very much for making Locked on Jazz your first listen of the day. I very much appreciate it and uh, excited to have uh, you tuning in and make sure you make Locked on NBA. It shows on fire. Um, also, Matt George. Locked on Kings is super good as we get ready for that matchup. All right. Uh, our, we're not shooting it well. Okay. That's clear. Some of it is individual players. Some of it is us as a whole. Um, so if we were to look just kind of where are we league-wide shooting right now. So offensively, we're the fifth best offensive team in the league and we're worrying about our shooting. Okay. We've also played Oklahoma City and Houston. We're terrible. So that's worth noting. Um, over our, overall, our field goal percentage is 15th in the league. Our three-point shooting percentage is 18th in the league at 32.5. So the first thing is that the median team in the league right now from three is 33.6%, which is <clears throat> down from last year's median team being at 36.8%. That's a pretty... 3.2 percentage point difference is taking place. Let me give you a th two thoughts on what's going on that are not rule changes. So the first one is that everyone's biorhythms clock in getting ready for an NBA season is off, except for broadcasters, frankly. I feel fine. Um, I don't know if I'm any good, but I don't, but I think the players are all off. And here's what I mean by that. I remember seeing a shot during summer league of Mike Conley sitting courtside and summer league for an NBA player is usually kind of a time in which you, you, you head over to summer league. You, you hang out with the guys, 
your season ended, you know, for most teams, probably somewhere in April, May. It's now July 1st. You, you've kind of chilled for the rest of May. You started to work out in June physically. And in July, you go out to Summer League and you get a little run in in Vegas. And you, it, you know, you have for the first, you kind of get back rolling. And you leave Vegas and it's July 7th or 8th or 10th. And then you have all of July, all of August, two months. Then you play your pickup games, usually with the college kids that are around your neighborhood or wherever you are. If you're in Miami, if you're in Columbia, you know, wherever you are, you play your pickup. Then you come back a little bit after Labor Day. If you got kids, you get them in school. And then you, the college kids are all back, so there aren't any as good runs. And you now go and take some runs and OTAs, as we call it, in your team gym. And then training camp opens in basically October 1st. So you're sitting there summer league, July 4th or so, and you're kind of getting ready and free agency's done. And now you know your team and you have July, August, and September to get ready. You have three months. Training camp opens in October. This year's summer league, I'm sitting there watching Mike Conley sitting summer league, having that thought like, oh, cool. He's in town to, to like go let it rip. I was... The MGM Summer League this year was August 8th to 17th. So August 17th, Summer League's done. They usually have two months before they head into the hometown to start their run. They had two weeks. And then they were in town. And most guys were later than usual. Like the Labor Day arrival wasn't quite the same as usual. In fact, I'll bet you the guys who played in the Olympics are all shooting better than the guys who didn't. Everyone talks about the Olympics being bad. I'll bet if we ran down across the league, everybody who had Olympic time, Rudy looks fine. Joe looks great for us. I'll bet you you go find Olympic guys, they're fine. Kevin Durant, I think, is pretty good right now. Be worth looking at. Zach Levine looked pretty good. I think this. I think the Olympic guys are fine. They, they kind of were playing. I think everybody else... Just off. They're not ready yet. And so you so that's it. Two, the ball's different. No one's talking about it a great deal, but the ball is different. They change the ball in the offseason. Uh the word is that most guys think it's fine once it's worn a little bit, but there are more kind of duds, but they wouldn't make the they wouldn't make it in the floor. So that talking to people, they don't think that's a major issue. So shooting is down. Three percentage points across the league. So now the most important thing to me is. Are we still getting the same shots we got a year ago? And the answer is yes. So what we did a year ago that really changed everything for us was we played incredibly fast. And when we played fast, what we did is we took threes early. So last year, we took eight threes a game in the first six seconds of the shot clock. Our QSQ, which is quantified shot quality by second spectrum, on those stats was an effective field goal percentage of 54%. So we got up the floor early, 54%. uh, QSQ, that's pretty good. And we actually hit at 64% effective field goal percentage, 1.28 points per shot on those, and it was brilliant. This year... Coming into the game last night, we were taking the exact same eight threes. Our quantified shot quality on those early threes was the exact same. And we were making 44% effective field goal percentage. 20 percentage points less per three. So we just aren't making shots. Same exact shot quality, same amount of shots. So we're not not running. We're not not getting the shots. We're just not making the shots. Stretch it out a little more. First nine seconds of the sh- The only team that took more than us was the Bucks, by the way. Stretch out for the first nine seconds of the shot clock. We took 18 shots for threes. QSQ, 54% again. We hit 61% effective field goal percentage. This year, last year we took 18. This year we're taking 18. Our QSQ is actually a notch higher. We're making 48% effective field goal percentage. We're just not making shots. Quite frankly, almost all of it's probably Jordan. Some of it's Donovan. So we're getting the exact same shots. As a team... We're not passing the ball nearly as much. In fact, we're last in the league in passes. 
And we didn't pass the game any more against Milwaukee than we did against Chicago. In fact, against Chicago, we threw 267 passes and Milwaukee was trapping and doing all these things that you would think create create a ball movement. And we didn't. Evidently, we threw 244 passes. We threw fewer passes. We're not passing the basketball. I don't know if it matters, but we're not passing the basketball. Our overall shot quality last year was fourth best in the NBA. This year, it's eighth best. Okay, it's down a little bit. Um, We were 53.2 this year at 52.1. So we're not quite getting as good of shots as we got a year ago. Our shot-making skills, which last year were fourth best in the NBA, this year is 17th. Okay, our guys didn't change. We're not running different stuff. The only thing that's different is Eric Paschal's not as good a shooter as George Niang. Eric Paschal goes one of five last night. And next night he gets five threes. He'll make two the next night and he'll make three of 10. George would have gotten 10 and made four of 10, okay? Pat, George wouldn't have jammed that follow, wouldn't have guarded Giannis either. So it's just different skill sets. So we're getting the same shot quality. We're not making shots and we have largely veterans. Back to my first point, veterans' biorhythms are all way off. So I'm not worried about this in any way, shape, or form. The fact that we have the fourth best offense in the league and we still have the eighth best shot quality in the league while we're not on, pretty good sign. Pretty good sign. Um, So yes, we were the fourth best shooting shot-making team in the league. We're now 17th best. So we're off. But like, let me pull something that is just truly incredible. This will take me a quick second. I was going to share a different screen with you, but let me see if I can find this. This is truly incredible. Um, I might do a screen share for those of you on YouTube. I have a bunch of screen shares ready, but we'll do another screen share. Uh, Oh, I can't share multiple screens at the same time. Hmm. Oh, let's see. Nope. Nope. All right. Uh, I will just... It's incredible, but I will just share it with you. Let's take uh, Jordan Clarkson, catch and shoot. He took 270 last year. He made 37%. The year before, he took 150, made 39%. 37, 39. So he's 38%. Okay, right now he's like 2 of 25. Not going to last. You know what he is? It's 38%. Joe Ingles. 49-45% 49-45% of the last two years. I mean, pretty small little range right there. 290 shots, not a lot of movement. Probably 47%. He's actually right there. He's on, Olympic player. Boyan Bogdanovich, 39 one year, 43 the next. What's he about? Came in last night, 4 of 14. Guess where he's going to be? Between 39 and between 43. Royce O'Neal, two years, 252 catch and shoots, 216, over 500 catch and shoots. 39% and 40%. He's about 5 of 15, 33%. Guess where he's going to finish? 40%. Donovan, 43% one year, 43% the next year. Guess where he's going to finish? 43%. These guys are the back of their basketball cards. The consistency from one year to the other with a larger sample size is amazing. And we're not there right now. We'll get there. People should duck and cover when we get there. So I wouldn't worry about it a great deal. And frankly, without like zeroing in on one guy, Jordan's so far statistically off his norm right now that that's a huge part of this. Like, I, you know, it's not like we you need to do anything about it or just, but let's just be honest. Jordan Clarkson is, if I'm going to pull up Jordan Clarkson's numbers for the year so far, it's not something you'd expect to see and it's not going to last. He'll be fine. And unfortunately, his 99-game streak came to an end last night right before it went to the cool round numbers of 100. Um, but... You know, Jordan Clarkson so far this year is 13 of 54 from three, 24%. If he goes and makes another six and is right back where he should be, it's going to be fine. Donovan's at 31. Boyan's at 30. Joe Ingles, Olympics, 43%. Mike Conley just somehow is on rhythm, 43. Royce, no veteran player, 30%. Like, this is the way it is right now. Dame Lillard. So most talked about guy in the league right now. Dame Lillard, 23% from three. Didn't play. Like, it's not, he's not on the same biorhythm schedule 
than he always is. That That's, to me, what's taking place here. Today's show is brought to you in part by Indeed. If you are out doing hiring and things of that nature, then Indeed is your answer. The Indeed is unbelievably powerful hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Indeed is your go-to hiring partner where you can find everyone you need with all of their various different match assessment, virtual interviews. They do it. Don't struggle to find quality candidates. Indeed will give you their instant match program. As soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description, and you can even invite them to apply right away. It's all going on in Indeed right now, and you get a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. That's a $75 credit at Indeed.com slash locked on. So if you want that all-star team, you need an all-star hiring partner. And that is indeed anyone with a business can tell you that hiring these days woo, takes time and effort and you need the assistance. So indeed will help you indeed.com slash locked on valid through December 31st. Today's show also brought to you by our friends at direct TV and direct TV stream. No more. Of one device for this, another login for that, and another where I'm watching the highlights. Get it all in one place. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before. So you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes, no more need to buy another device ever again, and the best part, no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Contents vary by package. Uh, chat room's been very active and I've been very wordy today. So let me kind of see if there's anything I want to jump over there. Uh, good morning to Spencer. He loves the live morning pass. Appreciate it. Tyler says that Hassan Whiteside is exceeding expectations. Yes, I think it'll be a rocky road. It has been for everyone who's had Hassan. So expect some ups and downs, but it's been up so far. It's been great. Um, why do players go through shooting slumps? I think it's law of averages and then it works in your head would be my answer. It's an interesting question. Um, Ron Boone always says like every player's done it. So, um, uh, you know, that's it. Uh, JC says Thursdays were live shows and coach Snyder interviews for Wednesdays. That's probably true. And then I don't have the coaches show and we're live every day now. So, all right, we need some more things. Now, wonder I couldn't think of them. All right. Speaking of coach Snyder, let me share a screen with you. I thought he had some really interesting comments yesterday. Oh, look, I've actually done it correctly and shared the screen correctly. So now let me go to it here. Uh, so Quinn had two different things last night where he talked about the rule changes in the NBA and the catchphrase that everyone is saying right now is all about the fact that the rule changes have increased physicality. And Quinn had some interesting comments in that regard. Hopefully this works. Here he is. It needs to, you know, it needs to measure itself out. I mean, I, think the intent i'm gonna guess that that's not working and i know why so give me one second to see what i can do here anybody else download windows 11 and have all their systems completely different than what they're used to right now where is my microphone uh let's do that right there and i think this will work better okay let's see and i will go to the chat room and have you guys tell me if you can hear it so here is coach q about the physicality well, I think it needs to, you know, it needs to measure itself out. I mean, I think the intent of the points of emphasis was essentially, in my opinion, uh, what we did a few years ago when you had flopping. You know, where people that were flopping, they wanted that to stop. So some of the gamesmanship involved, you know, whether it's kicking a leg into someone, stopping or going backwards and having someone run into you, you know, grabbing someone's arm where you're not in a shooting motion. Those things, to me, you know, are kind of analogous to that comparison. But I don't know at any point that we said defenders can, like, ride an offensive player, you know, out of bounds. You know, I, I think, that, you know, there's freedom of movement. If we're sacrificing freedom of movement, that's not, in my, in my understanding, the intent of what we're trying to do. And I, 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 you know, cautiously optimistic, you know, that'll balance itself out, but it, 
you know, we're, we're, we feel we felt like the defense is being disadvantaged. Uh, but what I've seen early is defenses that are, you know, particularly with our ball handlers. Don Donovan's not a weak player. Like he's low and strong and explosive. And if he's driving to the basket and suddenly he finds himself in the corner, something's going on. So, I mean, I've, we've talked to our guys about being strong with the ball and being tough, but when you put the ball down on the floor you know, and you're not allowed to take a straight line, um, you know, I've felt that way about the freedom of movement with, with rollers. You know, that was a big point of emphasis. And, you know, I, I say all this with confidence in the officiating. I've told, you know, the crews that we've had, you know, the, the level of kind of, um, understanding I have for the job that they're having to do. Uh, but I, I don't want this game to, to, you know, we should be able to let offensive players make offensive plays, basketball plays. So, I mean, th this to me, I don't know what we call that, you know, where you're just, you've got the ball here and you do this and you get, you know, the leg kicks, the stopping, backing into people, taking your space, like uh, that those, those, to me, they're being handled. It's the, but the amount of pressure that people and the physicality, you know, that people just have to see if that's if that's the game we want. That that that's not the way that I think that the you know, we're intending to have this emphasis. I think that's an unintended consequence. So that was Quinn uh, on this. Um... I guess there was an echo for a little bit. Hopefully it went away. Uh, but I, and then Quinn continued. It came back up uh, later in the presser. So let's get his, and he kind of reiterates the same thing, but let's hear it again. He's always, and he, he does this, some pretty strong comments, but also very, very tactful uh, in the way he's saying it. So here's more of a Quinn. There's supposed to be increased physicality. You know, I don't think that's what I'm supposed to do the increased physicality that officials are allowing you? Like, is that changing? Yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't, this is, I guess, the, the interesting point is, I don't think there's supposed to be increased physicality. Right. You know, I don't think that's what is supposed to happen. Um, you know, I, I think it's about body position as much as anything. So, um, you know, this is a physical game and it'll continue to be, but there's some specific play types that, weren't necessarily as much physical as they were kind of strategic. Um, you know, with respect to Giannis, I, I think it's more about, you know, having him have to play through a, a crowd. You know, I mean, that's not rocket science for anybody. He knows that as well as anyone, um, you know, because he's so good at going to the basket. So, I, you know, he he's physical, you know, so I, I don't know. I think if you try to be, physical with him in some of those situations you foul you know it's more about being in position so that was quinn snyder on that uh i got some really really interesting comments uh from quinn hopefully you got the first gist of it i heard there's a little double audio in there and uh hopefully you still got the first uh, aspect of that uh but really really in, uh interesting insightful comments somebody in the chat uh, tell me if we didn't get the first aspect that you couldn't understand. It was it such that you couldn't understand it. I can back it back up and let you hear it again quickly, or otherwise we can we can wrap the show for the day. Uh, and I thank you for making uh, Locked on Jazz your first uh, listen of the day. And we're excited to uh, bring you another fun week. Sacramento on Tuesday, and then we go back out on the road. Kind of a crazy little sequence early. We're going to play uh, seven, six, Eight straight games in non-consecutive cities, which is, you know, in other words, saying two home games in there as single games. And then um, and then from there, uh, we'll, we'll play in seven, you know, straight kind of different, seven different cities here. So really, uh, this one feels like a road game. I, I have this big suitcase. I literally, I'm unpacking it this morning and repack, doing wash and just repacking it. Um, so kind of funky. Uh, I think Disney on Ice is coming into town, which is why. All right, fun show today. Thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate you. Uh, we'll continue to try to make the live shows interesting with Quinn and those kind of things. Uh, thank you for your thoughts on the, the week's touch. We'll do power rankings tomorrow, and we'll do trends 
Uh, I like to do trends Monday, but we had that instead. I thought that was important. So uh, interesting comments from Coach Q. We'll see if that uh, gets a little national buzz and kind of changes the narrative of the conversation of whether physicality is supposed to be a part of what's going on. Quinn is now one of the elder statement coaches. When he speaks, people listen, right? Craig Popich, Rick Carla, Eric Spolster, Quinn Snyder are now the ones when they make a comment, people take notice. That is Locked On Jazz. Have a great one. Thank you very much. Thanks for making us your first list of the day. Now go listen to Locked On NBA for your second listen of the day.